Ladies, gentlemen, am I often forgotten? But certainly not by me. Law Runes, welcome to the channel and welcome to another guide. In this guide, we're going to be taking a look at Magic Glacor. I thought I made a video on this, and it turns out I did do a budget guide here, but I never showed how I would personally go through and do some Magic Camp kills, possibly for streaks, or maybe even some claim kills here at Art Glacor. Now, if you want to see that budget guide, it is a showcase kill of how to do Silver Iceborne with uh, Virtus and T85s. I'll go ahead and leave a card in the upper right-hand corner of this video for y'all to check that out. But today's video is going to be looking at pretty much best in slot gear on a magic camp setup at Glacor. Now, I do have one small request for you guys who watch this video. If you find this video guide helpful, or any of my other guides for that matter helpful at all, there might be someone out there who hasn't seen this video or this guide who might find it helpful. And if you're playing RuneScape, chances are you're probably in a clan that has a decent amount of people in it, and maybe even a Discord linked with it as well. If you end up finding this video helpful, maybe share it with a clan mate who you think could benefit from a guide like this, and I will forever be thankful for you sharing this video around. Anyways, enough of that selling out garbage out of the way, let's go ahead and get into this guide. So here is my gear, my worn equipment, my inventory, and relic. Now as far as the actual gear is concerned, the Tectonic has the standard PVME best in slot perks on it, which would be Crackle 4, Relent 5, and Patient 4, Devoted 4, Biting 4, and Invigorating 4. Now Biting, I personally have Hoarding on here from the old Death Cost, you know, pre-rework, and Invigorating all I either swap out for uh, mobile, as in invigorating for mobile, or if I'm somewhere else like a, that can take advantage of a Slayer task buff, I'll put Genocidal in its slot. But there are plenty of combos to put invigorating with, so find one that works for you. And some people put uh, mobile on their biting, however if there's something else there you feel free to choose whichever one works out. I'm probably going to go back to biting for mobile and then maybe put something like a crystal shield one or lucky one or something like that with invigorating, just to help out a little bit with uh, damage reduction overall. However, I am in no rush because obviously playing with biting combos is pretty expensive. And as far as weapons go, it is the standard uh, Precise 6 Aftershock 1 on the main hand and Aftershock 4 Equilibrium 2 on the off hand. Uh, my staff is running a P6R1 or Precise 6 Ruthless 1 and Aftershock 4 Equal 2. Now as far as the Bow of the Last Guardian in the event, this is absolute overkill. The only thing I have this in here for is an SGB swap and in that yellow EOF I have an SGB. If you have a physical SGB, SGB, feel free to use that. Uh, this is more so for use in between sunshines, just to get a little bit of extra damage out. And if you don't have an SGB spec, feel free to not bring it. Because honestly, it's just a little bit extra. Art Glacor happens to be a large boss, so you know, I kind of just filled up the extra space with it. Or if you don't have the puzzle box maxed out, you could easily put Bladed Dive into this preset. As typically at Glacor, you're not going to be using a lot of food anyways, so I just wanted to clear that up real quick. The offhand tier 88, the, uh, the ports offhand with the upgrade. That is just a Karoming swap. It has Karoming 4 equal 2 on there, and that is to make dealing with the uh, minions a little bit easier, as G-Chain Detto with D-Breath works out pretty well for nuking the smaller minions, and then you can usually just finish off the bolstered minion off with relative ease, being that most people are not going to be doing anything above 2500% with Magic Camp, and that's when the uh, HP scaling effect starts to take, so don't worry really about any of that. Now, as far as food is concerned, I am just using Super Brews and Blue Blubbers, you could easily downgrade this to uh, Guthix Rest or Super Guthix Rest or just regular Brews. I more so put the Super Brews in here as just having, you know, the best in slot healing for someone who is trying to learn this boss, you know, have that little bit of extra of a ceiling for learning. But with proper prayer flicks and resonance management, uh, no food kills at this boss are kind of the norm here. And on most of my presets where Bladed Dive used to be, I used to have uh, some Crystal Daggers just as a low cost a bladed dive option. A lot of people used like Excalibur and Flowers. Uh, in all my presets, now that dive is in game, where you can just uh, bladed dive essentially without the dual wield melee equipped, uh, I just go ahead and put these portents in here. They are attuned portents of restoration, I believe, 10 or 11. I don't quite remember the Roman numeral, but it's all you do is take uh, incandescent energy and rock tails. And essentially when you hit half health or go under half health, uh, they just automatically proc. Now they do have a cooldown, however, it is a nice chunk of healing that just procs automatically. You don't have to do anything with them, you just have them in there. However, don't get too reliant on them. They're more so kind of a nice convenience thing uh, because they do, I think it's a 
eight second or a six second cooldown between so it's not just you know gonna auto spam food for you but in some situations it is nice to have for prayer i just have a blessed flask you could bring extreme prayers super restores and cut down a little bit on food if you want to keep it cheap uh, whatever works for you i use a cow demon here so i don't need the spiritual prayers at all vuln bombs are kind of a given uh you can bring a little bit more if you want to vuln the minions however at any normal enrage or a streaking enrage uh you're not going to need vuln bombs for the minions so bring whatever comfortable amount you want to bring as far as shields are concerned i do bring a t90 shield over a defender just to get full value on res if it relaxes your nerves to bring arcane go ahead and bring that however i prefer the full value res of a tier 90 shield and the rune pouches there just follow the standard pvme setup for runes to allow you to pretty much have every spell on command for spellbook swap as well as the runes for the uh, blood and ice spells. So I'll have a link down to the PVME Discord in the description below if you want to check that place out for more detail. And the EOFs that I'm wearing, I'm just using a G Staff EOF. That's just the regular black EOF in my inventory. That one just has G Staff. And the one that I'm wearing is my Armital Battle Staff. The quiver that I am wearing just has full arrows in it for extra damage on SGB specs. Like I said before, if you don't have anything for an SGB swamp, you absolutely do not need it to get good kills here it's just kind of a fun extra thing to do in between sunshines and to top it all off grim is there for the added crit chance grim makes fsoa go burr so definitely bring one along for magic camp kill now as far as relics go this is a little bit of a change up from what i normally do normally i'll be rocking death ward a fury of the small with conservation of energy however i wanted to change things up a little bit i've been hearing a lot of people are starting to switch over to using berserker fury to get the extra damage out so you know as your HP is going down you will start to do more damage and being that I'm usually sitting at like 5 HP on most boss fights anyway I might as well take advantage of the extra damage I can deal now conservation of energy as far as magic is concerned is an absolute staple there is no change here that I would ever make in some cases with range and possibly melee you can get away with using uh, the 110% uh, heightened senses however with magic as far as the sun rotation goes uh, conservation of energy is absolutely essential for tsunami being on your third or fourth ability depending on how you play with your sunshine rotation and on omni power as well this adren save there and on sunshine on top of that absolutely essential i would not use anything else and for the third slot you could either use this uh which is font of life it's just a nice little hp buff or you could go with something like shadow's grace which is basically a permanent mobile so if you don't have mobile on your gear and you want to change change up your perk setup to have uh, little defensive perks here and there like either lucky or crystal shield or something like that and then put shadows grace in its place you could absolutely do something like that no problem the only time i run into issue with shadows grace is when i have some sort of melee swap and i can't get barge adren that's the only time i ever run into uh, problems with shadows grace however since this is magic camp with an sgb swap there is no melee or barging in sight so if you want to run shadows grace and go for it or if you want to run less of a full damage focus setup you could easily run death ward here with fury of the small and you'll get a little bit extra adren for a little bit more consistency on your sunshine rotations when you're not exactly getting you know the best crit rng and death ward does come into effect here ever so often so feel free to do it if it helps relax your nerves a little bit for learning however once you get into the kind of the flow of things uh zerker's fury is definitely recommended Alrighty, i think that covers all the basis on gear oh by the way uh, last little bit here the cape i'm wearing is just the hybrid zuck cape if you have just the magic one from normal mode that's perfectly fine it functions virtually the same with all that being said though let's go ahead and roll into that example kill all righty we have our preset loaded up and ready to go now as far as aura choice is concerned i'm just going to use maniacal as an example if you want to take a little bit less damage feel free to use something like majorat or inspiration or even invigorate any of those auras are going to work and we'll just get into this kill. Uh, we'll just go ahead and do a 2k kill just for funsies. And start. So what I like to do is run ahead a few tiles and then surge so it puts me right on this line. Then as it spawns, I toss a Vuln Bomb with Sun and then Target Cycle with a G-Conk and Smoke Cloud. And we got the uh, least ideal spec so far, which is uh, for the start is Pillars. Pillar start's always kind of annoying. But we press on anyway. So I like to surge over here. Bladed dive over to this corner. Walk over tile. Use an ability. 
surge with another. Just kind of sit over here. Oh, we got minions, so not ideal, but you know, completely work. We'll use our Karoming Swamp with Detonate, or a G-Chain, I should say, to use Detonate. And they all happen to die, so you know what? Fair enough. Go ahead and do an Auto Wild Magic as Fix. And I'll just go ahead and disrupt that hit. And we got ourselves in arms here, so I'll just go ahead and res this hit. And we'll just go into another Sunshine. Go ahead and do g -conk. just another basic. Maybe a Corrupt Blast into an Auto Nami. Another ability so I can get my staffs back off. g -conk, make sure Blood Barrage is on. Wild Magic, two hit is fix. Into another g -conk. Into an Omni. Now, we already had Pillars, so this is a uh, cannon attack. It doesn't go all the way. If you see this move over a little bit more, then it's for the Pillar, the little Ice Sickle that shoots over. Now, what I like to do here is just Devotion for anything under 2,500 and res the third hit. If you want to be really spicy, you can res the second or the first, but uh, usually I don't just for, uh, you know, there's no real reason to other than just to prove to your friends that you can take res. But, you know... That's how you want to go. Fair enough, fam. Here, I'm just going to disrupt a hit. And go for a SGB. And we'll build up for another Sunshine. The Sunshine, we have our A-Pot, so hopefully we don't get too screwed. I'm just going to go ahead and eat this one. And we got back-to-back, -back, uh... Sorry, focusing here a little bit. Swap over to Blood Barrage. Man, we're getting a lot of melee hits this one. I'm just gonna have to res one. All melee hits. Melee hits are the only hit to, like, 100% guaranteed hit there. Range hits can splash, although rarely, and mage hits have the biggest chance of splashing here. I'll just hit a few ABSs. And attendees to finish it off. Target cycle over to the arm and just use G-Conk with a threshold. Swap back over to Insight Fear. Maybe another G-Conk into a... Uh, didn't need the D-Breath, but if it min hit, then we could use that. Stack, a couple, stack up a couple bleeds. Make sure we're calged up. I'm going to go ahead and re-smoke cloud the boss. About to go for another Sunshine there, but luckily I didn't because we got ourselves a... Uh, yeah, we got our... Oh, we didn't get Pillar. Oh, okay. I misread that. So I'll just Devotion and Anticipate here, and then start up a Sunshine. Thought that went far enough for a Pillar, but obviously I'm mistaken. Don't have res up, so I don't go for the res. Do a Auto Nami into a Staff Spec, another G-Conk. Swap over to Blood Barrage. Blood Barrage is our friend. Okay, there's the Pillar attack. So I'll go ahead and G-Conk. Wild Magic, two of fix. Don't have time to G-Conk the Omni, so I'm just going to send it in. Fire it in there. Surge over. As long as you are surging while the animation of that thing is appearing, you'll be fine. As terrifying, terrifying as it might look, you are perfectly safe. Got minions in kind of a not ideal position. This is kind of the worst spawn for them, but we'll just uh, G chain with our Kuroming and then Dead OD breath. Target cycle over to the bolstered. A couple of billies on him and then back onto Glacor. And we should be able to do an uninter uninterrupted sun here. Can use our A pot again. I'm just going to snag a res just because I can. Yep, it's a DPS check, so. Let's build it up here. Get your Nami off, your Staff Spec off, and then Wild Magic is fixed. Should kill this. Should kill it. Make sure... Ah, I was not Calg. Make sure you are a Calg. That's quite important here. I'll just go into Attendees, because we're in the last half of the uh, Sunshine. Many ABS Specs, as the boss will allow me. Back to Insight Fear. If you want, you could go over to Exsanguinate, but personally, I'm lazy. Hit the Disrupt Shield just so I can Soul Split my uh, GB spec. 
you want to, you can also debilitate on this attack. It's up to you. I'm gonna eat a little bit here. Hit a devotion, hit an anticipate. And we're almost there. Res the third hit. And I'm just gonna go ahead and threshold here. Do like an auto asphyx. Into a G staff. And we're good to go. And that's pretty much a kill. Now, a couple of notes here is to just uh, pay attention. And sometimes, even myself included, we all get caught up in trying to DPS the boss as fast as possible. However, if you just hold back a little bit and wait to see what special attack you're getting to then do an ultimate, that'll save you a lot of trouble on a lot of kills here. Anyways, though, hope you found this guide helpful. And let's go ahead and roll that outro. Oh wait, sorry, almost forgot to loot. I know that's important for people. And it was summoning focuses. <laughs> Anyways, let's go ahead and roll the outro. Ladies, gentlemen, I did not forget about you, Law Runes. Thank you very much for watching. I greatly appreciate the viewership as always. Have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon, nighttime, whatever it is, wherever you are. And I will see you next time for the next guide. Peace.